Usually in the Fourier transform, you want to be able to relate the power spectrum directly back to the signal you measured, which means you need to have the results of the Fourier transform in the same units as the original signal. But this is not natively the case, and the purpose of this video is to show you the two normalization factors that you need to include in the Fourier transform in order to have the results of the Fourier transform be in the same units as the original signal. First, I'd like to demonstrate to you that the results of the Fourier transform do not have the correct units without any normalization. This is easy to demonstrate using simulated data. Simulated data is always a great way to test analysis methods because you know what the ground truth is and so you can easily check your results. So here I simulate a sine wave at 4 Hz with an amplitude of 2.5. And now I run through the Fourier transform, extract the magnitudes of the Fourier coefficients, and plot them in a stem plot. In the graph, you see that the frequency was correct. 4 Hz matches the simulated 4 Hz. However, the amplitude is totally incorrect. This is somewhere around 1,900 units, whereas the amplitude that I specified here was 2.5. And it gets even worse than this. If I don't change the sine wave frequency and I don't change the sine wave amplitude, but I just make the sine wave a little bit longer, so before it was 1.5 seconds, now I make it two seconds. Now all of a sudden the amplitude increases to almost 2,500 units, even though I didn't change anything about the signal itself, I just made it longer. So this is definitely wrong. But it does lead us to the first normalization factor, which is to divide the Fourier coefficients by the number of time points. The reason why you have to divide by the number of time points is that the basis of the Fourier transform is the dot product between the signal and the complex sine waves. The dot product contains only sums, and so the more numbers we add together, the larger the resulting dot product will get. Therefore, dividing by the number of time points basically just means taking the average covariance between the signal and the sine wave instead of just taking the sum. You can either divide by the number of time points inside the loop here, or you can divide by the number of time points after the loop. Just make sure you don't do both normalization factors. OK, so now I divide by n, and I rerun the code. However, the amplitude still doesn't quite match. This seems to be somewhere around 1.25, whereas it should be 2.5. But the good news, at least, is that the length of the signal no longer affects the amplitude. So now I can set this to be 20 seconds. So this took longer to compute but still the amplitude was around 1.25. Curiously, this seems to be about exactly half of the accurate value, which really is the case. And what's happening here is that the amplitude gets split between the positive and the negative frequencies, as I mentioned in the previous video. The solution is to add the amplitudes from the negative frequencies onto the amplitudes of the positive frequencies. And because the real part of the negative frequencies is the same as the real part of the positive frequencies, in practice, you can just ignore the negative frequencies altogether and double the amplitudes of the positive frequencies. So that would look something like this. So now the amplitude of the Fourier transform accurately reconstructs the amplitude of the signal. However, it's slightly more complicated than this because the DC component does not have a corresponding negative frequency, so you should really only double the amplitudes of the frequencies above but not including the zero frequency. So that could look like this. Times two. So now I'm ignoring the first frequency, which is the zero frequency, when I double the other frequencies. So these are the two normalization factors that you need to add 
dividing by the number of points, and multiplying the positive frequency amplitudes by 2 in order for the results of the Fourier transform to accurately reconstruct the amplitude of the original signal. So in this video, I showed you that the raw Fourier coefficients are not in the same units as the original signal, and I showed you the two normalization factors that you need to add to your code in order to accurately scale the Fourier coefficients.